right slide here. Okay, let's get started. Um, I could not help but throw a, a meme here on the slide given how cold it is today. Um, couldn't help it. Um, but uh, uh, hopefully the first assignment went pretty well. Did anybody have any major issues or hiccups or glitches with it? Seemed like most people got it done with no real issue. Um, I'm going to give you another similar type of assignment today. Um, it is going to be due Monday instead of Wednesday. The, the reason why, well, well, two reasons. One, this assignment is really going to be no more challenging than the last one. Um, and so I think you probably realize that these are pretty quick. Um, but I want to kind of get into the habit of having assignments due on Monday at 5 p.m. because that's going to be our pattern once we start using AutoCAD to produce drawings. Okay? So what will happen starting next week is we'll have teaching on Monday, doing quote unquote on Wednesday, and then whatever you do on Wednesday, if you can turn it in Wednesday, great. If not, it's due the following Monday at 5 p.m. And then we just keep on going with that pattern. So I kind of want to get on to that cycle, and I figure this quiz is sort of a nice uh, uh, place uh, to do that. Um, any questions on logistics and whatnot? I do have your attendance grades up to date uh, on Blackboard as well. Uh, this is the QR code for attendance, by the way. So this is not for um, the, uh, the, the student chapter. So this is one that you definitely need to do if you haven't done so already. Has everybody got the QR code <coughs> for attendance? OK, any questions? All right. So I brought my little keyboard and mouse back here because I don't want to keep hopping back and forth between uh, AutoCAD and the screen, although I might move this over. Let me, uh, let me get the slides loaded over here. I'm actually going to bring this over here. I'm just going to take this spot right here. Okay. All right. So um, I'm going to hop a little bit between the slides and bringing up AutoCAD. I'm going to try and do it as minimal as possible because I want to make the slides or I want to make the lecture as smooth as possible. But I do want to hop back and forth because there's a couple things I want to show you. Today what I want to do is I want to open AutoCAD. And I want to go through a couple things with you. We're going to do some really basic commands today. Um, but I want to sort of get everybody up to speed with using it. Okay. Um, a couple of things on AutoCAD, just, just in general. Um, AutoCAD uh, is one of the most ubiquitous or commonplace uh, uh, software programs in engineering period. Um, and I would say that just about every engineering office setting that you can find yourself in is either going to have AutoCAD or some similar type of drafting package uh, that's, that's there to produce schematics. Like that, that is going to be you're going to find something like this in just about every engineering office setting, uh, uh, period. Okay. Now, um, one of the things that I, I think is worth mentioning is that AutoCAD, its primary purpose, and I say this about AutoCAD, but this is true about the you know, drafting programs in general, while their primary purpose is to generate drawings, um, they can be used to help you as an engineer during design, during the concept phase. Like, for example, if you have an assembly and it's going to have a lot of different parts and pieces, then you can draw them up and ensure that everything's going to fit together before you start fabricating it. A lot of times, once you hit the green button to start fabricating, that green button, you hit that and you suddenly spend a lot of money. So if things don't fit together or you're going to start having issues on the fabrication side, that can turn into a lot of money. Uh, 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 problems uh, uh, on a given project. So AutoCAD and these packages can really help troubleshoot um, uh, during design. It can also be used to do computation, like for example, what's the area of a given segment, length, you know, dimensions, volume, so on and so forth. So it can help on that end as well. I mention that because, again, I think AutoCAD is a really versatile tool and, and I want you to try and get as much out of it as possible. Um, my goals for today's lecture are to introduce you to the interface, make sure that you're all familiar with how AutoCAD works. We're going to do some basic commands. Um, today's going to be pretty loose in terms of its structure, um, so everybody's going to be doing things sort of their own way. Um, but I want to execute some basic commands. I do want you to learn how to use the mouse, um, like how to, how to use all the different buttons. And I know that seems like a, a really hokey thing to say, but there's a lot of really cool uh, aspects of it. I want you to learn how to set up a drawing, uh, drawing units, drawing area, uh, how to change object snap settings and grid snap settings, um, and then how to view object properties. Um, uh, and, and we'll get into what that means here in a bit. Um, so everybody open up AutoCAD. Uh, go ahead and open it. Um, if you open AutoCAD, 
The first thing that you should see is a loading screen that looks uh, something like this. And just so you're aware, I've turned the contrast in a uh, sort of the opposites. I'm using the light mode of the program where I think just about everybody here, when you open AutoCAD, it'll be in dark mode. I did that so that if you print out your slides, you, you could write on it and it won't be super dark and you, you can't see your pencil and whatnot. Um, when you open AutoCAD, you should see like a window of recently opened files and then on the left, it'll say like open and it'll say new. Uh, for you Windows folks, that this is what it looks like. You don't need to click that drop down arrow next to new. You can just click new directly and it'll open a new drawing. If you do click the drop down arrow, make sure that you uh, select ACAD.DWT. So DWTs are drawing templates and there's oodles of uh, uh, pre-built templates, but ACAD is sort of the standard. And for you Macs, uh, a window pops up as long as you just pick ACAD.DWT and hit open. That's what you'll, uh, that's what you'll want to find. Okay, um, a couple other things I'll mention. Um, so whenever you uh, save a drawing file, whenever you are working in AutoCAD and you're saving stuff, okay, um, you will notice in the directory, whatever, like if you put it on the desktop, you'll notice that if you ever save a drawing as you're working, you will get two files that end up saving. You'll get what's called a drawing file and a backup file. So it'll probably look something like this in, in your Explorer. So the way backup files work is a backup file is an exact copy of the drawing file, but it's one save prior, okay? So like to put it in perspective, let's say you have a drawing file and it contains like a single rectangle, okay? And so you save it, okay? Then what you do is you add like a single line to that drawing and you save it again. The drawing file is gonna contain both the rectangle and the line, but the backup file is only going to contain the, the rectangle. It's only going to contain the rectangle. It is one um, one save state prior. Okay, um, and and I have actually had to use backup files every now and then in practice, especially when you're taking files and you're emailing them from one client to another, and and you know people are using different versions and stuff gets messed up in email. So it is really really uh, 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 um, incumbent upon you to save often while you are drafting. Really make sure you're hitting the save button a lot. The way that you use a backup file is you literally just go and change the BAK to DWG and it'll turn into a drawing file. So you just literally like click rename file and erase BAK and write DWG. That's all you gotta do, okay? Sound good? Okay, let's look at the AutoCAD interface. So everybody go ahead and open it and hit uh, new. Um, this is what AutoCAD looks like for you Windows users, okay? Um, there's a lot of ribbon uh, commands up top. You see some menus on the bottom. You see a command line and some other options and menus. This is generally what um, the Windows interface looks like. There are a couple things that we can customize, and we're going to do some of that today. Um, but, uh, but this is generally what the interface looks like. Some of you, depending upon your settings, might have a couple dialog boxes that pop up, like a properties menu or a block menu. You can close that. It's not no big deal. We're not really going to use those uh, today. Okay. Now, for you Macs, this is what it looks like. It, if, if there's any one thing that is uh, extremely different between Windows and Mac, it is just the interface. Um, uh, instead of a ribbon series of commands on top, you see all the commands over on the, uh, on the left. Honestly, this looks more like AutoCAD Classic to me. Like I, when I learned AutoCAD, it was you know back in the day that we didn't have a ribbon and all the commands were just sort of listed on the left. And this is actually a little bit more similar to that. But the way that I'm teaching the the class it shouldn't really matter what um, a, a, a version you're using. A lot of what we're going to be doing is done the same way. Okay, so we'll we'll get into that. Uh, as we uh, progress and whatnot. Uh, the other thing I'll mention for Mac is on the right, you'll see layers and properties. I'll reference some of that throughout uh, today's lecture, specifically the properties. Okay, let's look at some stuff on the um, command, on the screen, because I want you to sort of see what's going on. The first thing I want to focus your attention to is that line at the very bottom. This is the command line, okay? Now, the way the command line works is or the, the way that AutoCAD works in general, is you work by executing commands to create a drawing. So you will cr enter the line command to create lines, or the circle command, or the arc command, or what have you, okay? 
Um, so you execute commands to actually draw stuff. And so at the bottom, there's a bar for you to enter commands, and we'll be entering commands quite frequently in the, cat, in the class. Now, most often, you shouldn't actually need to put your cursor in the command bar and you know, type the command out and press enter. Like We should be able to just type you know, uh, naturally on the screen. Um, but uh, if you're, for some reason you're having an issue, you can always just click the command line and start typing it out. And the nice thing about the command line is it will also display the status of the command and a history. So I'm going to pull up AutoCAD real quick just to sort of show you what I'm talking about here. So um, here's AutoCAD. Let's go new. So here's AutoCAD. And for example, um, if we type out line, let's just type out line just for the sake of discussion. We press enter. Okay, so if you look at the bottom, you can see that now the command line is different. You can see that we're in command mode. It's asking for information like specifying first point and what have you. And so I could start, you know, clicking here on the screen and, you know, doing all that and what have you. And then, for example, if I just hit escape to get out of the command, notice like above the command line, there's sort of this like shadow history of all the previous commands. Like you can see that that pops up. If you want, you could click this arrow here on the very right. Uh, and it will bring up a history of all the stuff that you've entered. So, you know, I just throw this out there just, you know, uh, uh, for your reference so you can see uh, what's going on. Okay? Everybody with me so far? Okay. All right. So, like I said, I'm going to try not hop around too much, but sometimes I, I think I'll need to in order to make things clear. Okay? Model space and paper space. Okay? So, if you look at the bottom left, Okay, you should see some tabs that look like this. So there's like model and then layout one and layout two. Does everybody see that? Okay, so for right now, what I'll say is always be drawing in model space. So you'll, you'll, when I want you to draw in paper space, you'll know. So unless otherwise stated, draw in model space. But basically, the idea is the difference between model space and paper space is that in model space, you're sort of drawing the parts and components in reference to a common coordinate system. Um, but in paper space, you're drawing like actually on the sheet of paper itself. Okay? Um, paper space tends to be more valuable, or at least I, I, I've seen in my practice, when you have a single part or component or system from which you plan to produce like multiple different sheets. So it's like you draw one thing in model space, and then a bunch of different layouts, a bunch of different paper spaces or, or sheets uh, to export. And uh, to be clear, you do not actually, like, you, you can plot directly from model space, which is why if you're working on a drawing and you only plan to produce, like, one sheet, most engineers will just do it straight out of model space. So, again, uh, for you, what that means is, unless otherwise stated, make sure you're in model space. You'll know what paper space looks like because you literally see a big sheet of paper. So if you're drawing in that, you're doing something wrong. Okay. All right. The drawing options and interface stuff at the bottom. So that stuff at the bottom right, if you look at the bottom right, you should see a bunch of buttons that looks like this. You'll see a big word that says model and a bunch of different commands or a bunch of different uh, options. Some of them will be highlighted. Some of them won't. Um, those are basically you uh, customizing how AutoCAD operates. Okay. Um, we can do a lot of like really cool stuff with this. We can turn that drawing grid on and off. So if you look at the screen, you should see a grid. Like it looks like sort of a, a faint graph paper. We can turn that off or change it. We can change object snap settings, grid snap settings, polar tracking, annotation scales, a lot of stuff. We're not going to do like all this uh, today, and but by the end of today's lecture, you'll understand what a lot of this stuff means, like what is grid snap and object snap and so on and so forth. Um, let's talk about the cursor, um, and, and I'm gonna, we're going to do a quick customization right now. So the drawing cursor should look like this. It should look like a plus sign with like a square in the middle of it. Um, the cursor actually does change a little bit when you're executing a command. So if you're actually drawing a line, the cursor will look different. So it sort of is a key to you as a user that, that hey, you're in the middle of a command. Um, one of the things I want to do though right now is I want to change how the interface looks and we're going to test this out by pulling up coordinates. So at the very, very, very bottom right, you should see a menu button. For you Mac users, it looks like a gear. For you uh, Windows users, it should be three horizontal lines at the very, very bottom right. And when you click that, it brings up a big old menu and I want you to check coordinates. Okay? 
Now, if you do that, what should happen is now take your cursor and put it in the screen. As you move the cursor, you should see that the coordinates are updating in real time. So let me, I'll do this up here so that you all can see it. So we're going to hit escape. You have this. Go to AutoCAD. And what I'm doing is I'm going to this very right button here, and I'm checking coordinates. And then now you should see this box here on the bottom right here. And then as you move the cursor, you can see that the coordinates are updating in real time. Does everybody see that? Okay. That is a pretty handy tool. And on our first drafting homework uh, next week, this is actually pretty useful. So I just want to throw that out there. Uh, let's go back to this. As we're going through this, if you miss something or, or whatnot, don't, don't hesitate. Raise your hand. Let me know. If you have a question, chances are there's other people in the class that have that question too, so don't hesitate. All right. Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, what's going on up top. Up top, we have the ribbon. Um, the ribbon contains pretty much the vast majority of common commands that you're going to use uh, in AutoCAD on for you Max. It's on the left. Um, I would say that most often everything that you need is in the home tab. There are a couple of tabs that do tend to be a little bit useful. Like for me as an engineer, I spend most of my time either on the home tab or the annotation tab. Um, I'm not saying I don't use stuff on the other tabs, but I tend to find myself there more than I am everywhere else. Okay, That's just where I find myself uh, uh, using things. Um, uh, for example, like so, so to make a point, um, there are commands in the home tab for text, but the annotation tab has some more detailed commands on that or, or different ways of producing dimensions, different ways of producing text and text styles and things like that uh, that you might not find on, on the home tab. So uh, the home tab contains all the basics and then the other tabs is where you get a little bit more specific. Okay. All right. Um, the other thing I want to cu uh, customize, and for you Mac, you don't need to do this because it's already set up automatically, but for you Windows users, I want to look at this quick access bar on the very top. So if you look at the very top, you should see like new, open, save, save as, you should see these buttons. Uh, and then there's a little thing uh, with, it looks like a um, paper airplane that says share, y'all see that? Next to that, there's a little drop down menu. Okay. What I want you to do is I want you to drop down and I want you to click show menu bar. Okay. And if you do that, what happens is it brings up a, a, a much more comprehensive set of commands. So I'll do that up here with you. Uh, we'll go here. And we're going to go to this button right there. And we're going to hit show menu bar here at the very bottom. What that does is it brings up like your file, edit, view, you know, uh, a, a more comprehensive set of commands. Uh, uh, there's a lot more stuff in these uh, menus here than you'll find in the ribbon. So between the ribbon and what you find in these menus here, you'll pretty much find everything that you need uh, to run AutoCAD. So I kind of like having this up just to know where everything is. Like for example, in the draw menu, every object you can draw all in one place and all the different options uh, for that and what have you. So again, just kind of like that. Bless you. Uh, any other questions? Are any questions? Are everybody good so far? Okay. All right. So let's let's have some uh, 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 fun with this. Let's start drawing some basic stuff uh, in AutoCAD. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to go through some commands and I want to talk about how to select things, how to use the mouse, uh, and what have you. And in order to do that, we do need to have some basic commands. So we're going to do lines and we're going to do the erase command. Okay. Now. Um, I am going to use some terms here, so and I've already kind of used this a little bit. So I want to talk about this term object. I, I've been mentioning it already, but throughout this dem demonstration, there's going to be reference to the term object in AutoCAD. And when I say the term object, I basically mean any feature that can be printed or plotted. Um, so we're talking about lines, circles, arcs, patches, polygons dimensions, text, annotations, etc. Anything that's meant to be plotted on a sheet of paper, I'm going to refer to as an object. Um, but I, I put here a note, I say that any inserted feature that can be plotted. There's a difference between whether or not you can plot something and whether you must plot it. Okay? There are a number of uh, objects in AutoCAD that you might draw, but you don't intend to actually print. So like, for example, there's an object called a construction line. And a construction line is basically just a line that goes on forever in a given uh, orientation. 
And so uh, engineers will use that as a reference when they're drawing things, but they don't actually mean to print it. They don't actually mean to, uh, uh, to plot it. And then there are other means for turning stuff on and off, like using layers and what have you, and we'll get to that stuff uh, a little bit later. Okay, now the way uh, AutoCAD works is you really have two modes of operation. You have what most of you are doing right now, which is just like general navigation. You know, it's basically just, you, know, you can zoom in and out, you can turn layers on and off, just sort of change, like basically general navigation. But then there's also when you're executing a command. Okay, now every command is different and is gonna operate differently, but essentially what'll happen is when you turn on a command or you execute a command, AutoCAD's gonna ask you for some basic information uh, or uh, ask you to specify some options as the command progresses, okay? So like, for example, if we draw a circle, uh, it'll say, okay, where's the center of the circle? What's the radius of the circle? Or what's the diameter of the circle? And there are other different ways of drawing circles. Do you want a tangent to this object or so on and so forth? So there's a lot of options and whatnot that'll be uh, spelled out to you as the command progresses. And commands will keep on going until they're finished. Um, I mentioned this a while back. One of the most um, uh, useful keys to you is the escape key. The escape key will terminate a command, okay? So it works at any point during a command operation. If you think you're drawing something and you're doing something wrong or you're making a mistake, just hit the escape key a few times, okay? Just, you can hit it to, to, to your blue in the face. It's not gonna do anything. Uh, it's not gonna harm anything, okay? Okay, so here's the, let's talk about the line command. So there's a couple of different ways to draw lines. Lines are the most basic object in AutoCAD. And one thing I'll mention, there is a difference between lines and polylines. We will discuss polylines later, okay? For now, we're just gonna deal with lines, okay? But one way of drawing a line is to just click the line button. It's on Windows, it's under the Home tab. On Max, it's on the left toolbar. But another way is just to type out the command. Lines are so common that they have their own little shortcut. You can just type the letter L and press Enter, or you can type out the word line and press Enter. Um, AutoCAD commands are very natural by their name, so if you want to draw a circle, you can just type circle and press Enter. It's, it's pretty straightforward. So I want everybody to get a little bit familiar with this. So I want you to open up AutoCAD, draw the line command, just start drawing a few lines. Um, the way AutoCAD works is it will draw lines contiguously. So contiguously just means sort of the hip bone connected to the leg bone. They'll just keep connecting from end point to end point. Whenever you're done, you can just hit escape to finish the command. So I'm actually gonna do that with you just to sort of make the point on how this works. Um, so again, we can go to AutoCAD here. I've already got a couple drawn, but I'll just do another one. I can click the line button right here or I can type out L and press enter. I click my first point and then click. And then as I'm clicking with the left mouse button, we can see that you know, I'm drawing more and more lines. And by contiguous, I mean they're just you know, drawing you know, in, in, in sequence. So I'll just draw a few. And then when I'm done, I'll hit escape. And boom, I've got some lines, okay? Just some basic lines uh, here on the screen. Nothing, nothing major, okay? Now, a, a couple of things that you should notice um, as you're drawing, um, and, and I wanna point this out, and then I'll show you here on the screen, is that um, as you're drawing, some dynamic input should display. So for example, as you're drawing, you will see some text boxes pop up that will try and ask you, hey, how long do you want this line to be? Hey, what orientation do you want it to be? Do you want it to go to particular coordinates? And on Monday, we're gonna talk more about how to specify that precisely, because there's different ways of doing it, like using the at symbol versus using the hashtag, and what have you, there's different ways of doing that. We'll talk about that on Monday. Um, the other thing that you might find is that your cursor is kind of like attracted to some nearby features. So like, for example, um, let me pull up uh, AutoCAD again to kind of make the point. If you uh, open AutoCAD, Let's draw another line, okay? So I'll start a line up here, and so like one of the things you'll notice is, okay, so watch what happens when I do that. See how the cursor kind of like is attracted to that orthographic direction? See how it's kind of attracted like this? So that's, that's called polar tracking. 
The other thing that you'll notice is as I get my cursor right here, see how that little square pops up? That little square symbol pops up and the cursor's kind of like attracted to where that line ends? That's called object snap, okay? And so we'll talk a little bit later uh, today on, on how to customize those settings, but I just wanted to bring that up that as you're drawing, you should see that, okay? Now, the other thing I'll mention is that, uh, let me, let me go back to AutoCAD here. So um, I want to make sure that you're paying attention to what's going on in this command window. Is So right here, I'm going to type L and press enter. Okay. Now look what's going on here. So I'm going to draw a line, draw a line, draw a line. And let's say I draw this line and I go, oh man, I didn't want to do that one. I made a mistake. If you look there at the bottom, it says specify next point or close or undo. And see how on undo, the, the U is highlighted? Does everybody see that? So if I type U and press enter, what it does is it undoes the last segment that I just did, right? So here's one, two, three, four, five, six lines. If I hit U and press enter, now it undoes that last line I just did. So the term undo can, um, can, can fix that. And in case anybody's curious, if you type C and press enter, it closes the shape. So it goes back to the first, first point. So just in case anybody was curious, okay? Make sense? All right, I, I don't wanna leave this point right here without asking to see if anybody has any questions, because hopefully, Everybody has opened AutoCAD and tried to draw a few lines here with me. Is everybody good? Okay, all right, I see some thumbs up. I like it. Okay, now um, let's go back to this. Okay, now um, I want to talk about using the mouse at this point because now we've got some objects on our drawing and I want to talk about using the mouse because there's a lot of different features that are worth mentioning. Okay, so first off, um, the left mouse button, that's for selecting objects, it's for you know, executing stuff on commands as you've seen with, um, uh, with uh, 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 executing the line command. But um, I've noticed a couple people have started to do this, which is selecting uh, objects in the screen. And you'll probably notice that there's some different um, colors that pop up. Like there's a blue box, a red box, you can get this weird lasso thing. Uh, going on. I'll talk about that here in a second. Okay, that's what the left button does. The right button uh, basically is just anytime you have a drop down menu or any additional options or anything like that. That's what the drop down menu uh, is, is for. Obviously, I think right click is pretty, pretty common. Okay, what about the mouse wheel? The wheel zooms. Okay, now the way that it works is it zooms in and out based on where the cursor is. Okay, so if, for example, um, let me, let me, I'm going to try and demonstrate that part live. So if we go to AutoCAD and here's our drawing, right? And I want to zoom in like right here. If I want to zoom in right there, I put my mouse cursor here and this is where I zoom in. And you can see that the center of the zoom, like where it's zooming in is where the cursor is. Whereas if I want to zoom in up here, I, I put my cursor there. So wherever the cursor is, is where it's zooming, okay? So, and again, the mouse wheel, incredibly uh, valuable there. Um, the other thing that's worth mentioning is what happens when you press in the mouse wheel and you actually click the mouse wheel. If you click the mouse wheel, what that will, well, there's a couple different ways, okay? If you press in and hold the mouse wheel, it will pan, okay? Panning, basically, the best way I can describe it is if you two are objects in AutoCAD and I have a camera on you, panning is just literally moving left to right. You're not actually moving the objects, you're just moving what you're looking at, okay? So if you press and hold, like actually press in the mouse button, it will pan around the drawing, okay? And if you double click the mouse wheel, like I actually click twice, like treat the mouse wheel like it's a button and click twice, it will zoom to the extents. And what the extents means is everything that you've drawn all in view. Does everybody see that? So if you grab the mouse wheel and literally like, uh, 
Let me see if I can grab this mouse. Oh my goodness. Are you okay? Oh my. Goodness. Let me get you another chair. Can I borrow this chair? You're okay? I, it happens. It's all right, man. It's okay. I'm going to set this right here for now. It's all right, man. This stuff happens. So. First time I, I ever got in front of a crowd and did any public speaking, I was in a high school play. I got up and told a joke in front of 800 people and nobody laughed. And then I did this for a living, so it's okay. <laughs> okay. Back to AutoCAD. Okay. So as I was saying, when it comes to pressing in, what you're going to want to do is actually, like, press in, like, click that. You can actually click it, and it's a, uh, it's a button. If you do that you should be able to pan, and if you double click, it will zoom extents, okay? Again, this is like, being able to do that, I cannot tell you how much time it will save you uh, as, a, uh, uh, as a user, okay? Um, the other thing I wanna talk about is selecting. So let me, let me explain how it works uh, to select objects. Some of you are kind of noticing this, but if you look, um, so, if, so if you go to the screen, what happens is, and you want to select something, you can click directly on that object, but that's not very um, efficient if you want to select a bunch of objects, okay? Instead, what you want to do is you want to uh, essentially uh, group them all together. Now, I'll be honest, I really don't use the lasso feature very much. I think that's probably just a little bit of my uh, uh, old school coming out because when I first learned AutoCAD, we never had the, the lasso, but you might. Um, but you'll notice that there's two different uh, colored uh, 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 regions that can be created, okay? Blue is what's called a window crossing, or window selection, sorry, window selection. Uh, whenever it's blue, what you have to do is the entire object has to be contained inside the region for it to be selected. But if it's green, that's a crossing selection. So with green, the object just needs to touch the region and it'll be selected. So let me kind of show you what I mean by that uh, here on the screen. Uh, so let me go to AutoCAD. Okay, so like right here, okay? So if I just click out here in space, let's just click here. If I drag to the right, that's a window selection. So like watch right here. So if I put that right there, it's not selecting anything. But the moment I do this, okay, notice how, see how that one diagonal line is highlighted? Y'all see that? That's because the entirety of that object is inside the window. So it will select it. But it'll only select that. It's gonna ignore the other two, okay? Whereas if I drag this way, now it becomes green. This is a crossing selection. And all I have to do here is just barely touch something and it'll get selected. See, I'm just barely touching these objects and it's highlighting them, okay? That's what a crossing selection is. Now, the way that you bring up the window is you just, uh, the way you bring up the window is you just click once, okay? If you click and hold, it'll do this lasso thing. I, I don't really use it very much, it's just me. You can use it if you want, but it'll work the same way. If you drag to the right, it'll do a window. You drag to the left, it'll do a, a, a crossing selection, okay? So that's the difference between the blue and the green. The blue, you have to pick everything. The green, you only have to touch something, okay? And, and uh, blue will have a solid boundary. Green will have a dashed boundary, okay? Okay, all right. Uh, last thing I wanna mention are object properties. So all objects have inherent properties. Uh, so like as you draw it, um, you might draw something and you want to modify properties of a given object. So um, the command for that is prop or P-R-O-P and press enter, or you can type out properties and press enter. Um, there's also on the ribbon a little arrow under, uh, uh, under properties right there that you can bring this up. Um, if you click a line and do properties, you'll see something that pops up that looks something like this. Some of those properties are gonna be like 
Uh, the text is going to be uh, editable, and some of it is not. Like, for example, if you look here, I've got properties for a line, and you can see that, like, the length of the line is grayed out, like it's not editable. The, the reason is that some of the properties on that line are dependent upon others. Like, you can't really change the length of the line, but you can change where the start point is and the end point is, and between that, that will affect the length. So the length is a function of the end point uh, locations and whatnot. Um, but I use that somewhat periodically for um, uh, uh, like text uh, properties and colors and things like that. Like I could go in and make a line blue if I wanted or what have you. So. Okay, the erase command. Now let's try and erase some things that we just drew. So erasing is pretty easy. You can just select the objects that you want to erase and hit delete. Um, to be honest, that's how I do it. Um, you could actually execute the erase command and press enter. I don't really do that all that often. I literally just pick what I want to delete and just press the delete key. I think it's a lot easier. Okay? It's delete, by the way, not backspace. Okay? So what I'll do is I will um, open up AutoCAD. I will pick a couple lines. Let's pick these. Hit delete. Boom. Okay? Um, I'll tell you, by the way, that most of the um, uh, users, or most, most of the experience that I've had uh, in drafting, and most of the folks that I know that, that do this quite a bit, um, a lot of times they'll just use the commands. Like they get to the point where they don't even click the buttons anymore, and they just type out the commands and press enter, because it's just faster, okay? So I mentioned that to say that I am gonna probably uh, uh, emphasize commands more than I am like where the buttons are, because one, they're, they're um, a, they're ubiquitous among versions, or they're common among versions, and they're faster. So uh, uh, I just want to throw that out there. All right. Okay. Um, I did throw this here in the slides. Um, this is this comes directly from Autodesk. I've got one for Windows and one for Mac, and most of them are the same. These are keyboard shortcuts. So, for example, the letter L is a keyboard shortcut for drawing a line. So type the letter L, press enter, it'll draw a line. Type the letter C and press enter, it will draw a circle. Um, T for multi-line text, A for arcs, et cetera. Um, I'm not gonna use all of these, but I will reference some of them. And uh, I mention that because um, these, again, are, are some shortcuts that can make your drawing uh, faster. Anything that you can do to produce drawings as efficiently as possible is going to make things a little bit smoother. This is the Windows version. This is the Mac version. And again, a lot of the commands are, are the same. Um, there are fewer menu-like commands, I think, on Mac because the way Macs operate or the way the operating system is, a lot of those menu features are automatically visible uh, and what have you. All right. Any questions so far? All right. So we got a few minutes. I want to get into drawing setup land. So let's talk about uh, drawing setup. Um, uh, the first thing I want to do is uh, show you about how to set up units. So if you uh, type out the word units and press enter, this will bring up the, uh, a, a dialog box. It looks something about like this. Um, this is where you can specify the, uh, the dimensions or the units for which um, the, the drawing uses. And you can look at both length units and angular units. Um, the default is what are called decimal units, and decimal units are basically just saying that this line is four units long, as opposed to this line is four inches long or four millimeters long. I would say decimal is probably the most common that I've seen most uh, uh, engineers use because they'll just reference everything accordingly. Um, one other aspect or one other option is to use architectural. Architectural would be drawing things out in feet and inches and you know, this line is two feet and three and seven sixteenths inches long. Actually, you know, drawing it in, in, in that uh, uh, context. Um, precision is the accuracy to which AutoCAD will store the objects. And the default of four decimal places is usually fine uh, for most uh, 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 drafting jobs and what have you. You can spec out both length and angles. For you civil engineers, um, you might want to change your angular measurements from decimal degrees to degrees minutes seconds for if you're doing land surveying. So I just throw that out there for your, uh, 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 for food for thought for you. Okay. 
drawing area. Okay, this is something I kind of want everybody to mess with right now. So the drawing area is the region um, that can be used to define the outer limits of the drawing for the purposes of plotting. Now, I want to be crystal clear. Once you set the drawing area, that does not prevent you from drawing outside that window. I mean, um, I'm gonna, we're going to set the drawing area right now to be the bounds of a, a 8 half by 11 sheet of paper, but you can still draw outside that. What that basically means is that the limits that you set can determine the bounds. It's an easy way of determining the bounds for plotting. Okay? So the way that you do that is you type out limits and you press enter. Okay? And then at the very bottom, AutoCAD is going to ask you for some info. So for the lower bound, what we'll do is we'll do 0, 0. And for the upper bound, we'll do 11, 8.5. And uh, bless you. You don't need to use the parentheses, by, by the way, when you're typing this out. Just do 0, 0, enter. 11, 8.5, enter. No parentheses. And what that will do is uh, it will set the drawing limits to those bounds. Now, I'll tell you, once you execute that, you probably aren't going to notice anything visually. It's just going to be like, okay, how do you know whether or not that's right? I'll show you how, how you will know whether or not you did that correctly. Okay? Um, but yeah, so limits is the command, and then do 0, 0, and then 11, 8.5. Sound good? Okay. Now, what we're going to do is to see whether or not that's right, we're going to mess around with our drawing and grid settings a little bit. Okay? So I want you to right click the, um, you can right click either one. If you look next to the word model at the bottom, you'll see either a graph paper or a series of dots. Uh, you can right click that and just hit uh, settings or grid settings or drafting settings. Um, and you'll see a dialog box that pops up something like this. Now to show you what's going on visually, I want everybody to try something here. I want you to go over here on the right and where it says Display grid beyond limits at the bottom. Uncheck that and hit OK. And what should happen is if you look at your drawing, now the grid is only being shown where you specify the limits. Does everybody see that? So this is a way that you can visually see whether or not you've set your limits uh, appropriately. There's a couple of other things that we can do here, which we're going to mess around with right now. Uh, but I just wanted to throw that, uh, uh, throw that out there. Uh, well, actually, let's talk about object snap first. Object snap. Remember when we were drawing and it was, the cursor was sort of like attracted to the end points of um, the lines that we drew? Remember that? That's called object snap. So the way object snap works is you as the user will specify what you want AutoCAD to hover to. So, for example... Um, right now, these settings say that it will attract to all of the endpoints, the midpoint, the center, um, quadrant, intersection, etc. So if I'm drawing and my cursor gets around the midpoint of a line, it will get attracted to it. If I'm drawing and my cursor gets near to the center of a circle or the center of an arc, it will uh, key to it. So this can be a way for you as a drafter to understand, okay, if I need to draw a line from the center of this circle to something, it's not near the center of the circle, it is the center of the circle. And that's where you as the user are spec specifying what you're trying to, to snap to. Okay, grid snap. Okay, I'm going to try and move quickly on this. Grid snap is a way of ensuring that when you draw lines and features that they are drawn to regularly specified intervals. Okay. So I want to go back to that grid settings uh, option, and what I want to do, here's what I want you to do. I want you to check, um, so the default spacing is 0.5, I want you to turn grid on and snap on uh, on the top, and then where it says on the um, very uh, right where it says 2D space, uh, 2D model space, I want you to check that and hit OK. Now, if you do this correctly, what will happen is the layout will look a little differently, and it will suddenly look like a bunch of dots as opposed to a bunch of grids. Does everybody see that? So if we hit escape, um, let me go back here. I'll do this with you. So we're going to right-click here, snap settings. We'll turn the snap on. We'll turn the 2D model space, and we'll turn this grid beyond limit. So we'll hit OK. Now, what will happen is if you zoom in here, you'll, it's kind of hard to see here on the screen, but you'll be able to see this. Um, let me throw this down. 
you'll be able to see this dotted grid. Now, the cool thing about this dotted grid, okay, let me zoom in a little bit. Let me try and draw a line. Now watch what happens to your cursor as you try and draw a line. Does anybody see this? See what's happening? I can't draw my line anywhere that's not on this regularly specified interval. Does everybody see that? So as you're drawing, this is a way of including specificity. My current grid snap settings are every half a unit or half an inch, if that makes any sense. So I can only draw lines at half inch intervals. Okay. I could change it to quarter inch or what have you. Okay. This is a way of, of uh, uh, specifying uh, uh, the objects that you draw. Okay. And my final note that I'll mention is ortho orthogonal mode or polar tracking. So orthogonal mode, if you click the line or click the box that uh, looks like the right angle there at the bottom, so this is what turns on orthogonal mode. Orthogonal mode is not a bad idea if you are planning on drawing horizontal or vertical lines only. Because what AutoCAD will do with orthogonal mode is it'll say you cannot draw lines that are not horizontal or vertical. Let me show you. Um, so if I turn on that right angle right here, if I turn that on, and I now try and draw a line, let's turn off all these snap settings just to make that clear. So now I can draw a line sort of wherever I want, but now see, I cannot draw a line that's not up, down, left, right. It's forcing me to draw only horizontal and vertical lines. That's what happens with, or, uh, bless you. That's what happens with orthogonal mode. With polar tracking, polar tracking is what was already on. Polar tracking is the one with this, uh, the one next to it. Polar tracking will allow you to draw lines at any orientation, but the cursor will so sort of snap to ones that are orthogonal. That's what polar tracking is. It'll let you draw, but it'll, it'll sort of hover a little bit and, and attract to the ones that are uh, up, down, left, right. And as you're drawing, you should be able to hold the shift key, and shift key will turn on orthographic mode. It's like orthographic mode, grid snap, Anything like that. These are really good ways of ensuring some accuracy in your lines. And that's going to be the theme of next week as well. Any questions? All right, I'm going to pull up the QR code one more time for those of you that didn't get a chance to scan it. I will see you all next week. Please try and stay warm. Yeah, I looked at them. I can figure out what side is like.